I'm on the way to Awamansa Cemetery. I'm making detours all over the place because Awamansa Road is closed. El Diablo is trying to get in my way. It's not letting me get to Awamansa. Okay, I'm getting closer. I'm lucky. Sharp right onto South La Cadena Drive. All right, La Cadena Road. Turn right. Miguel Bustamante Parkway. Okay, we're here. So there's a museum on the grounds and we'll go in there a little bit later and look around. Okay, so these are the families that are buried here. And uh, this is the Alvarado family. Lorenzo Trujillo right here. He's the guy that led the group here to Aguamansa. Then over here we have a picture of Louis Rubido, it's got to be a French name, and he also came, this is the Alvarado family, right here. Right here we have Cornelius Jensen, and Cornelius married in with the Alvarado family. We'll go back and check out the daughters over here. And so that's one connection. Here's Peter Peters. And he married Refugia Alvarado. And here she is with her sister Susana Alvarado de Vaca. How can I help you? Here's the ranch house of the Jensen's about 1897. And these are pictures of the Jensen family members. Here's Cornelius and Mercedes Jensen. Mercedes was an Alvarado. If you know New Mexico family, you recognize the De Vaca last name. Um, that's a lot of times what they did, is they would just put, when they took a census, they would put the man's name, and then it'll be like plus wife or plus family plus kids. So that, that's when they took the census, but what we were able to do is, um, like I said, they, they keep the death certificates in the archives and we can get the rest of the information through there, okay. but we just need the people that want to do that, <laughs> you know. And then a lot of times even family members, they'll come on one time. Is that right? I was up here last Sunday, I always wanted to come completely off of it, just close to one side, you know? So while the gate was shut, that I drove up to. Oh no, I meant the road. They closed like one side of the road. No, was it closed around, you mean? Yeah. Uh, outside of the cemetery, the Agumansa Road, on the one side is closed off. Because they're doing maintenance or something on it. Oh, you mean it goes up to the dump up there, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. So one at all? Uh, yes. Okay, it'll be five dollars. Okay. Well, why board off grave robbers? Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, the location that they put here was never a real burial. They just put a stone here. Okay, so there's a museum here with lots and lots of information. There's a lot more to see. So. You need to come and do a video and tell us all these details. There's maps of where the different families are buried. It's very detailed. 
I wonder if you're related to any of the people here. Good afternoon, Ramon Martinez in Colton, California at the Agua Mansa Pioneer Cemetery where many, many, many Spanish surname people basically came here first with a Trujillo party from Novo Mexico. So let's look around at some of the history. Right now we're headed to this marker that marks where Trujillo, the leader of the group that came here, is buried. Manuel Lorenzo Trujillo, 1794 till 1855. Born in Abique, New Mexico, Lorenzo Trujillo led pioneer families from New Mexico along the Old Spanish Trail in the 1840s. They made their homes in the San Bernardino Valley of Alta California. He's buried here in Aguamansa in an unmarked grave close to this sculpture, which is dedicated in his honor. Descendants of Lorenzo Trujillo, 2011, the sculptor is Simi Daba. These gravestones are Myers, A. Myers, he died March 7, 1888, at age 52 years. Maria Dolores Trujillo, wife of Esquipula Trujillo. Here's a handwritten stone talking about Louis Robido, who died in 1868. And under this big tree, Next to the museum here is a memorial marker, so let, I'll let you read it. I'm going to head over to this big burial group with a fence around it. And we're going to see some graves on the way. Matilde de Kilgore falleció el 11 de abril 1882 a la edad de 31 years old, 3 months, 5 días. Sleep on, dear sister, and take thy rest in Jesus' arms, forever blessed. Doroteo Trujillo, 1822. Jesus M. Baca, 1822, 1884. EPD and Paz Descanse, and the M is M.A., so he's probably Jesus Maria Vaca. So this fenced area is the Jensen family area. This looks like a new stone done for Mercedes Alvarado Jensen, 1837-1914. This is an older stone to 
Juana María Ávila de Alvarado. Nació el 11 de abril de 1811. Murió el 27 de enero de 1884. Beneath this stone my body lies, and with the angels my spirit lies. So this is the grave of Cornelius Jensen, 1814 till 1886. It's very damaged. Let's hope somebody does something to preserve this history for future generations. This is a stone made out of cement with writing by hand. Somebody did to try to preserve this story. Something de su padre Crisanto. Algo Rivas, Rebas. Okay, let's head up to this big group over here. Estela R. Trujillo, 1888-1902. Crisostomo N. Trujillo, December 23, 1883, and let his soul Trujillo. Juan E. Trujillo, 1852-1907. Aquí yace Bernarda, hija de José Varelas y su esposa, de Cándido Zop. Nació el 9 de junio, A.D. 1881 y falleció el 30 de diciembre, A.D. 1903. What does A.D. mean? Here's a baby. Here's another group, and there's a big one over there. Maclovio A. Trujillo. Lina Olivas. Fernando Trujillo. Okay, I've run out of time, so I hope you got a little peek at what's here, and I hope you get back here and finish off. We're looking at all these graves and tell us about the long, long history of the Spanish-speaking people, in this case from Puerto Rico to 
Colton area, Awamansa. We've been here for a long time. Your history is very long. My name is Elizabeth Galvan. I'm an undergrad at University of Riverside. And right now I'm here at the Aguamansa Cemetery. I'm doing a research on cemeteries right now for my class, for my bioarchaeology class. And it's pretty interesting knowing that it's been here since the 1800s. Um, uh, we have more than 2,000 graves. They don't have, not all the graves have headstones, which is pretty sad. But they did a, um, they used this technology where they look under the ground and they, that's how they knew that they had more than 2,000 burials here. Only um, 300 have headstones are identified, which that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, bioarchaeology, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's the study of humans or you can go into anything basically like this, like like knowing where the burials are. Um, I actually want to go into forensics anthropology, um, excavating human remains, which I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah.